Yeah, I'm not gonna script this video. I'm just gonna fucking raw dog it like the Lord intended. This video is gonna be completely self-indulgent. I just have a lot to get on my chest. I can't believe I'm doing this again. I mean, yes, I can. I mean, I can. I fucking love this shit. That's why I did it for four years. I just, you know, sometimes you have to go away for two years, realize you're a lesbian, and then you're allowed to come back to YouTube. <laughs> this video is such a chaotic mess. I really hope that you guys will actually watch it because I do have some really important points to make and I think I have some valuable lessons to teach people. So please bear with me, I promise. This is not gonna make sense. Yeah, I truly believe that this video could be helpful to anyone who's struggling with their identity or trying to figure out who they are lost in an internet full of people who seem to know exactly who they are and what they're doing and do themselves with such confidence while you're floundering trying to scrap together an identity from i don't know a bunch of old clothes because <laughs> you don't want the environmental guilt of buying new stuff or like projecting yourself onto the personality of a bunch of content creators because if you can't do it yourself you can just like the content of somebody else who can do it for you god this shit absolutely sucks ass okay so i'm gonna approach this video as if none of you know who i am i would assume that people watching this video have no idea who i am i've never seen anything i've ever made before do not know what is going on here they just have come in for some chaotic lesbian content great Okay, so like six, five years ago, six years ago, I had quite a successful YouTube channel called Noodlerella. Uh, she was like my persona, she was pe pretty pink. And just before I hit a million subscribers, I deleted everything. <laughs> I just vanished, started trace, didn't really explain anything. Basically, I just had like a complete mental breakdown over the whole thing and scarpered, went completely MIA. I am now ready. I processed everything. I'm ready to impart what I've learned from the whole experience. And this is a fresh start. Don't think about the past, it's always there anyway. A lesbian that listens to Mitski. Shocking. So back to the point of this video, what does me realizing I'm a lesbian have to do with being allowed to return to YouTube? Being allowed, like they, they banned me. I wasn't allowed back until I figured this out. That's <laughs> kind of how it feels. More importantly, what does it have to do with you? And how can you benefit from my experience? We are gonna have to go right back in time to the day I deleted all my content. I was honestly at a place where I couldn't even look in the mirror. I was so disconnected from my physical body. I just, it didn't feel like me at all. Couldn't even look in the mirror, let alone have to sit there editing videos of this total stranger who was supposed to be me. And if you guys hadn't noticed, posting stuff on the internet is all about identity. Every time you post online, you are asking, who am I? How do I want to be perceived? And we like engaging with content from people who know who they are and what they're doing. It feels good. It helps us quantify our own identity by engaging with those posts. Every time you like a tweet or you like a TikTok or you subscribe to a channel, you're saying, this is me, this is part of who I am, this is part of my identity. Because if you can't be that person, you can just follow as many accounts as you want who are better at being you than you are. I mean, people even joke about like their brand, like, oh, I'm working on my brand, it's my brand. But what they really mean is, who the fuck am I? Who am I? What is this thing I'm putting out into the world? How can I make something tangible out of the concept of me? It's gone beyond just like hair and clothes. Now you can have all these accounts on the internet which also are a physical manifestation of who you are and then on the flip side you have whatever the hell i was when i left youtube i was definitely not one of those people who knew who they were and what they were doing and i certainly shouldn't have been making any content and putting it out into the world because it was very painful to watch for me and i'm sure for everyone else involved and i have no doubt in my mind that this is a relatable experience for so many people that you're just looking at the rest of the world and going, what are they doing right that I'm doing wrong? Why is it so easy for them and so hard for me? Why can't I just be something and know what that something is? Um, back when I did Nudarella, did Nudarella? I did Nudarella. I was a very lonely girl. I was peak primed and ready to be the kind of person who would go on the internet and make content and find an online community of friends primed for that shit. Prime like steak. 
I was very lonely. I only had internet friends. I spent all my time on the computer. So I made up this persona. Pretty pink princess, Nurella. Her life is perfect. She is squeaky clean. Her channel is partnered with Disney for Christ's sake. And I would brush off a lot of weird shit that happened back in the day when I was a YouTuber. You guys have no idea how insane people are. People are nuts. This community is full of insane people. I don't want to know most of them anymore, frankly. I'm Audi. That's a whole other thing we'll get to in a video in a million years, I'm sure. Oh my god, I will tell you one thing though. <laughs> I was once in LA. I think I was at like VidCon or something and I was part somebody from the Disney thing I was partnered with asked me which male YouTubers, which guy YouTubers I was chatting to and like thinking about settling down with so that I could progress to family vlogging. Yeah, that's like what they expected of me. <laughs> ha ha ha, I laughed it off. It was funny. I was having a good time doing the Noodorella stuff until I was not. To me, it feels like there was a very obvious shift on my channel from uh, the Noodorella content to the Connie Glynn content. But the problem was, Connie Glynn, she didn't know who she was. She had no idea. She'd been using Noodorella as a front to not have to think about it for years. Luckily, after a mental breakdown or two, I eventually had enough common sense to leave. I realized whatever I was looking for, I was not gonna find it here on YouTube. And this is really one of the most important things that I'm hoping uh, people will take away from this video. The internet cannot tell you who you are. It's not gonna happen. You're not gonna find it here. It can help you put things into words. It can help you find the right language for the thing that you are. And it can help you convert your life into consumable content that you can watch comfortably from your phone screen at the end of the day. But it can't tell you who you are. If you want to find that out, you need to go away. <laughs> you need to get away from here. You need to spend some time with yourself and look at what you find yourself doing, what you find yourself enjoying, how you find yourself dressing when you don't have an audience and a platform to perform to. To me, it's not at all surprising that so many people have had these huge identity breakthroughs over the course of the pandemic because we've had to be alone with ourselves. We've had to question why we dress the way we do and who we do it for. Why do I have this hairstyle? Do I actually like this? Do I like presenting myself this way or is just how I think I'm supposed to be seen? So when I say I realized I was a lesbian and that means I can come back to YouTube, what I really mean is I spent two years picking myself apart until I was a raw, bloody mass of exposed human flesh and I got to see what was at my core. And it was really painful and it really sucked, but now I know who I am and I'm comfortable putting stuff out into the world again. For the first time in 27 years, I know who the fuck Connie Glynn is. I'm not sure I'm sticking with the name Connie Glynn. I don't know, I'm umming and ahhing about it. Maybe I'll have a different name, I have no idea. You guys know you can just do that, right? You can just do that. All of your identity is at your disposal. You can just change your fucking name. Everything is made up. You can do with it as you please. And I'm not kidding when I say it was painful. Realizing I was a lesbian and all of this nutty gender shit, honestly, some of the hardest shit I've ever done in my life. I felt like I gave birth to myself. It's like I had been lied to my entire life and then suddenly someone told me the truth and I cried. I cried! Here are some pictures of me crying when I realised I was a lesbian. It was an incredibly overwhelming experience. I honestly think like the two years I took off from YouTube, all of the shit I was going through before I deleted my channel, it was all like <laughs> trying to push me towards this moment. The universe, like, Connie, you're a fucking lesbian. And there's, you're just not this thing. I wasn't the things, I wasn't any of the things I thought I was, basically. <laughs> and I was really angry. I was, I'm still really angry. It took me 27 years to realize this stuff. Because you grow up watching TV and it's all just compat, compat, compat. Maybe we'll talk about compat in another video, but we're not doing it in this one. Do you guys want a brief on 
how I realized I was a lesbian. Would that be helpful to people? Maybe one of you is a lesbian and you're going to watch this and be like, oh shit, I'm a fucking lesbian and you won't have to go through all the shit I did because I'll do it for you. And also it was just funny because like lesbians are oblivious. <laughs> we have no idea. And it's fun to laugh at us. So I'd already spent a lot of lockdown questioning everything about my appearance. And I realized I hate wearing dresses. I hate looking like a traditional girl. It makes me incredibly uncomfortable. It was fine when it was Nudarella because, you know, she was a little show. Nudarella was a little show. I was putting on a little show. I didn't have to worry about whether it was me and I felt comfortable. I was doing a little performance. She was like gender personified. Her gender was pink candy floss and Disney channel original movies. <laughs> I don't fucking know. So yeah, I just didn't have that excuse anymore and so many of my clothes made me fucking miserable. I hated it. What I really like wearing is like sweatpants. I like wearing boys clothes. And I don't like having long hair. Maybe I should go even shorter. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever I am right now, there's, I'm very comfortable. I'm looking in my viewfinder. I'm like, hey, bitch, check you out. I think people should stop using binaries to explain their gender. I think, you know, like point at something in the street. My gender is, I don't know, sleep paralysis demons and 90s grunge music. There you go. <laughs> Whatever. The lesbian part was actually way harder. Yeah. I'm sitting on the sofa. I'm watching Rick and Morty. And I'm laughing to myself because I'm thinking, man, it's so funny that I'm always hooking up with guys when I'm not attracted to any of them and I don't enjoy their company. And then I was like, wait, well, why do I do it then? And then it slowly dawned on me that what I actually like is men being attracted to me, not that I'm attracted to them. I don't like the man. I like that feeling of serotonin I get, my body being like good job Connie when a guy was into me and I did the right things and I knew how to play the game and I could say all the right things to make them like me. I mean you grow up watching all of these movies that tell you that the most fulfilled you will ever be in your life is if a man finds you attractive and it's so easy to mistake that with some kind of Pavlovian bell that when a guy finds you attractive that means that you're attracted to them. But that's not the same thing. Liking when a guy finds you attractive because of fucking brainwashing is not the same as being attracted to men. Okay, how, how graphic am I gonna be with my next description? Um, I, I, I'm just gonna go for it. So then I started thinking about all the times I've actually, you know, been attracted to other people and gotten into it because of who they were when, you know, we were having sex. Um, it's all women. It's all women. It's all women. Women. You know? Women! And the only person I've ever been close to being in love with, I'm pretty sure now, oh my god, I'm oversharing so much today, <laughs> was a girl anyway. Yeah, it was a girl. Moving on. Boys, I like them to look at me because I'm brainwashed and girls, I like to look at them. I like to talk to them. They're cool. They're great. I don't feel that way about men. <sighs> Sorry, boys. So honestly, at this point, I was freaking out a little bit. You saw that I cried. Um, and I said to myself, well, no, Connie, shut up, dude. You're being crazy. There's loads of men you're attracted to. And I was like, yeah, okay, come on. Let's list some men I'm attracted to. I'm obviously just lying. So then it hits me like a big yellow bus. All of the men I am attracted to <laughs> I'm not real! <laughs> they don't fucking exist. They're either celebrities, movie characters, book characters, cartoon characters, fucking cosmic entities, concepts with no physical form. <sighs> Those are not men. Those are imaginary friends. So, here I am. Fucking they, she, lesbian. And this is how I look, and it took me 27 years to figure it all out, and we got there in the end, guys, we got there. Do you guys want to see some of my friends' responses to me realizing I was a lesbian? <sighs> it's just great to know that I was apparently like the only one who didn't know, which is really cool. I literally wrote a book series about gay princesses, and 
Ellie Wolf is me. I put all my trauma on her and I still didn't realize five books of lesbian princesses and I didn't, I did not clock it. <laughs> Thank you so much for sticking around if you got to the end of this video. I have no idea if this video was just completely self-indulgent or if this has been helpful to anyone, if anyone's gonna learn anything from this, but I just had to get all of this off my chest so that I can move forward. And I guess there'll be a video coming soon, another one. We're back, baby. See ya.